Just about everyone knows someone who has a snoring problem. It could be your partner, your parents, or even your grandmother. We tend to make jokes about snores, but snoring can be a sign of a more serious problem. Here with one of the newest tools to aid in the diagnosis of snoring is Dr. Jeffrey Lipsitz, Medical Director of the Sleep Disorder Centre of Toronto. Welcome. Thanks, Marla. We talk about snoring, and it seems to me that it's more of an annoyance for the person who's beside the person who's snoring than the person who is snoring, but it can't be serious, can't it? Well, it is an annoyance, and of course, most men who snore deny that they snore. They only mm -hmm. come in when their wives drag them in. That's right. And uh, so it does have social implications, but it may also be a red flag for something more sinister. It's important to find out what exactly is going on in people who snore. Now, that sinister thing could be sleep apnea. Sleep apnea. And that really is a concern. It is. I mean, snoring, well, the mechanism of snoring, of course, is where the airway gets narrower during sleep, so that the air doesn't flow through smoothly and you get basically air turbulence producing a noise. Now you brought a graphic, so, so let's take a look at that and tell me what we're looking at here. Okay, this is actually a normal airway where you see the air flowing through smoothly. The person's, uh, it's a cutaway of the head basically. You mm -hmm. see the nose and the mouth uh, on the top part and the airway on the bottom. The air's flowing through smoothly, but when one falls asleep and the muscles relax and the airway gets narrower, uh, what you end up having is the air not flowing through quite as smoothly. You see a lot of the arrows have disappeared. Mm -hmm. And you see on the top the image of the noise that's being produced that many wives will uh, be able to relate in great detail. Yeah, we do say wives because it's mostly men, but women do get this too. Absolutely. Okay, we don't want to leave them out. No. Uh, the problem, of course, and what we're looking for medically is, does the person go even beyond this stage where the airway closes completely? Mm -hmm. And we need to make that distinction in order to know what we're dealing with and how to treat them. Now, up until now, the only tool that we've really had is sending you off to a sleep clinic where you have to sleep overnight and wear all these electrodes and it really can be quite difficult. A lot of people don't want to do it. But you've brought us something that's new. What's new? Well, the sleep lab is still the gold standard. The problem is if there are 100 million people in North America who snore and perhaps 20 million who have sleep apnea right. and we've only dealt with 20% of the 20 million, how on earth are we going to deal with everyone else? So there is a way now to screen people for snoring and to determine if they might in fact have sleep apnea and that's an exciting new device called a sleep strip. Uh, which uh, can be used, it's just a little mustache you apply that has mm -hmm. a little computer built in that can pick up your breathing during the night and actually has a built in uh, LED device which will give you an indicator of your sleep so apnea. this is the whole strip. That's the entire thing. You take it home and you put it on like a mustache. You put it on like a mustache and it has some airflow sensors where you see the blue dots, right, two in front of the nostrils, uh, one in front of the mouth. Uh, it has a built-in computer, a battery, and a little uh, numeric display. Now, on this graphic, you can see you've got that, the oral and nasal. Now, what are those thermistors? Thermistors are things that can pick up the air flow by looking at temperature changes of the uh, air as you breathe in and as you exhale. And right. they're, they're typically the type of thing that's used in a sleep lab. Here, it's all been miniaturized and incorporated into one little device. So you sleep with this on. It's very light. I mean, hardly even noticed it. You sleep with it on all night, and then what do you do? You, you bring it into the sleep lab? You can bring it into the sleep lab, or you can actually mail it back to your doctor. because. Really? Once the display appears, and there's some instructions on how actually that works, once the display appears, it's permanent and actually can go right into your medical chart so that it becomes a, a, a demonstration of what happened to you on that particular night. And is there, in fact, a significant degree of uh, concern that you might have sleep apnea? Do we need to go further? Mm -hmm. Or are you one of these people who we can probably view as just being a snorer, if that's what you've told us, and then go on to treat you in that way as opposed to taking a more medical, medically serious approach? Certainly because sleep apnea is a concern for a number of medical conditions, high blood pressure, stroke, even, that's, even possibility, although rarely death. That's right. Sleep apnea, the, the big reason we have to distinguish this is, as you say, sleep apnea, if you have it, can lead to medical complications, also because it's more likely to make you tired during the day. Right. Uh, the literature says it increases the risk of a car crash five to seven wow. times. Wow. So there are some short-term and long-term concerns, and we really want to know what we're dealing with here, snoring or sleep apnea. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Uh, next